What up? It's your boy, Fixer Merlin. It's a winch. I put a winch into my 92 High Ace cruising cabin using the existing bumper. It's a hidden winch. It has no parts sticking out. All the airflow can still get through. Check it out how I made this. Toyota, Toyota, Toyota. First thing I did is I removed these grill parts. Some are aftermarket, some are kind of the factory parts scabbed together. But with those out of there, I should be able to get the winch to go through properly, I figured. And so took all the little tiny screws out, pulled that thing out. I'm not going to need that again, but I'm going to hang on to it. You never know. And that's how it looks without that thing. And that's what made me think that I could actually do this. It sits up in that little pocket above the front bumper piece. That front frame rail kind of behind the bumper, the sub assembly, I guess. And there's plenty of room to reach your hands in there. You can get to the connections, whatever you need to get to. And nothing sticks out the front. That's really what I wanted. And looking from the top there, you can see those terminals will connect to the battery without shorting out. There's a little cam here that lets you freewheel it little clutch you're able to get your hand in and flip that I'm gonna have to move that horn that's the only thing that was in the way was that horn taking a look underneath I'm gonna to have to make some sort of shelf for it to sit on like a piece of plate extending out horizontally for the winch to bolt into and it should be a quarter inch piece and then maybe a piece of C channel I wasn't sure what to use here to wrap around this but it has to connect somehow into those frame rails so I just found a piece of quarter inch plate that I had in my shop and happened to be very close to the size so I just snipped it down to 6 inches by 12 inches for that winch to sit on top of and then there are four holes that get drilled corresponding to the four bolts that go into the bottom of the winch housing. Pull that sub-assembly off, drill down through those holes I put into the plate just to locate them into that uh, thin metal bumper sub-assembly thing there because I can't get the bolts through otherwise. Now those bolts go in from the bottom and because of how the air conditioning condenser is I can't access them from the back. It's very hard to get your hand back there. So I'm using a step bit right now. It's hard to see but I'm going from the bottom and just enlarging two existing random holes to about inch and an eighth so I can get a socket up there and get some purchase on that bolt and it helps lining those back bolts up when they're bolting up in there. I'm going to come across the front of the frame like this and out through the frame rails using 3 16 tubing, this 2x2 two two here, and slide it in to the frame on each side and use two or three bolts to hold it in and just have one coming across the front like this, tie them together. I think that's the simplest and best way, which will be very strong. But the frame inside I think is two and a quarter. I'm going to mark these and cut it out and see what the actual inside size is because if it's two, two by two frame it's going to be all loose in there and I might have to shim it up with something fatten it out a bit so it doesn't flop around I'll just do a quick visual inspection now that I have that open and there's a little bit of dirt in there but I mean for a 30 year old van there's no rust there's nothing like that it's perfect condition I couldn't ask for a better situation to get started with now the inside of this frame is two and a quarter inches, I was correct about that. It's substantially taller, but I'm more worried about the lateral side to side movement on this. I'm just going to use some quarter inch flat bar that I had kicking around. And so I've used zinc coating on that because it's going to be inside and there's no way to paint it before I weld it. There's the zinc weld through primer. So laying those on there, it's going to fatten it up to that two and a quarter inches. And I've already drilled holes and mounted a nut inside. It's hard to see it in there but once that bolt is put in from the top it'll draw the whole entire thing up into the top part of the frame and then the holes will go through the side and everything will be solid. I'll position these and just tack them on make sure they fit first and then once I know that everything is fitting correctly then I'll go ahead and weld them permanently. So these fit perfectly at inch and a quarter wide and that hole on top is a factory hole in the frame just lines up to where I put the, the nuts welded inside the tube and using the bolt I'll just cinch that up. It's a 7 16 very short bolt but an inch long and even like that it's very very solid. 
because it's, it's tight into that tube. I'll drill two more 7 16 holes here. Just using an old right angle Milwaukee drill I almost got rid of because I never use. It's one of my few corded tools. But it works good for this to fit into the little corners and stuff, odd spaces. And there you see the bolt coming through, the back one and the front one getting drilled. And I put a piece of wood in there so I didn't jam it into any of the air conditioning parts and made a nice clean hole. And I'll set these bolts in. There you go. And that's incredibly solid, incredibly strong already. And no wiggle room at all, no play in there. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. I had to be a little bit more creative on this side. It was a little bit tighter. So I ended up using this uh, ratchet and the quarter inch socket just onto a drill bit that would fit into that quarter inch socket and managed to work my way through. And these holes are nice and clean. The bolts fit perfectly in there as well. Then I marked and cut that square tubing square to the front of the van so that the tube running from left to right would be square to the van. Then I just measured and cut the piece with the corresponding angle to fit in there. Left a bit of a gap because I'm welding it obviously, but it fits perfectly right there and that'll form my frame. Rather than weld the whole thing together, I decided to opt for bigger 5 8 bolts through each side. And I just made a little clevis there using quarter inch. And I figured if you ever have to take it out of there, it's going to be a, a nightmare. So that's a little bit of a fail safe in the event I ever do have to move it or change it. And that's solid as can be. You can push on that. There's not a bit of play whatsoever in that. That's strong as can be. And that'll, that'll get this van out of trouble if it ever gets in trouble. That's going to be strong enough for sure. Very happy with this. So the fabrication work is pretty much done. Now it's just a matter of putting everything together. All the little bolts and parts, tightening them all up. I did have to fab up a small extension for the factory bumper to bolt into. There's a 12 millimeter bolt underneath the license plate that bolts into... Uh, it was just a little kind of a tinny piece that they had on there. Just like it's a step to keep it two or two and a half inches away from that metal piece but I welded this tab on in the correct location and I'm also going to weld some tabs here to mount this aluminum part on where your fair lead comes through I'll just get them tacked in place and once everything's checked out and everything's good I'll do the permanent welding and I'll just fit it up with the bumper to make sure everything fits exactly within the specs that I wanted and nothing's interfering or catching or banging or rubbing. Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly where I wanted that plate to be on the base of the winch. Right where the factory bumper is. And there you can see there's a part I fabbed. I'm going to now drill and weld a nut into so that the bolt has a place to pass through as you tighten it. And then using some scraps of quarter inch, I just made little gussets to kind of reinforce the sides of those tabs where the fair lead comes through just to strengthen them up a bit because I could and it doesn't take much time and I've got the scrap here so I might as well just make them bulletproof like everything else here kind of funny little angles once I got them cut little sliver pieces but they welded in really nice and really finishes everything off once all the final welds were made I cleaned it up with acetone prepped it for paint and I also hit it with the uh, die grinder just took off any high spots from welding imperfections just a quick once over and degreased it with acetone and also went inside the tubes cleaned them out a bit as best I could there was cutting oil and stuff in there and while the paint is drying I'm just going to use this brush thing that I found at Canadian Tire with a quarter inch extension for the drill for the driver actually a couple of them that I just had and I'm going to go into the frame rails and just clean them vigorously Try to get all that dust out, anything that's in there over the years, because I'll probably never be seeing this again. And using the drill and the vacuum, I just did. It reminds me how they clean the furnace ducts, actually, in a home. Just go in and out, use the vacuum to suck it and clean it all out. And it's pretty much good as the day it came off the factory right there. I'm going to throw some rust protection in there. Uh, I was going to use this. I had the bulk set up. But the applicator that I bought wouldn't uh, wouldn't suck it. It didn't seem like it was thin enough. Maybe it was just too cold. 
Maybe the thing's a piece of junk. I don't know, but I don't have time to really figure it out right now, so I just switch back to the old faithful. I'll just use the spray can. There's the final shot of everything that's been painted. I found a hook as well, a recovery point that's going to work really well. But it's shiny. It looks really good. It looks like something you just would have bought online or a kit that would have come for this van. So if anybody really wants one, I can make you one. Just let me know. And I was trying to be very careful as I put these in not to scratch them up or ding them too bad because they look so good. Just tightening all the bolts. This was kind of snug because it's made to pretty high tolerance. But I was able to get it in and just a tiny bit of persuasion with a wooden block and snapped right into place. And same as these bolts, everything lined up perfectly well. I was really precise drilling the holes so there wouldn't be any play or movement. And so I'm tapping them in, it's just gently because everything's so snug. I'll use some Loctite over here on that recovery point. And these square nuts slide into the winch. There are notched out pieces in the aluminum that hold those nuts in there. It's kind of hard to get them started, but you have to sort of stick your finger in to get them in the right place. And those bolts just come up from underneath. And there is a shot of the two in the back that would have been impossible to get to without enlarging these holes, so I'm glad I did that. And then I'll just snug everything up using lock washers. And some Loctite over here on the recovery point. Because it has two bolts going through it, there might be a tendency for it to rack a little bit. The one in the front will tighten up, but the one in the back, um, if I over tighten that one, then it might want to, um, just because of the angle of it, it might want to sag down a bit and loosen over time. So I'm just going to put Loctite on that just as a extra precaution, I guess. Probably not even necessary, but might as well. And this control box was supposed to mount on the top with those set screws on the front and hooks on the back to attach it, but I flipped it around so that it's sitting behind the unit because I didn't have the clearance on top. Just modified it a bit, some pliers, and actually used some wire to attach it. And then making the electrical connections was pretty simple. Um, the black just goes to the black. The black with the yellow boot goes to the one marked yellow. And then obviously the red one goes to the red one. And I'll apply some anti-corrosion under there as well because that could end up taking a lot of environmental um, corrosives, let's just say, from the road. So I want everything to remain fresh for when I need it. And I'll also cover those wires with the uh, I think it's a 3 8 or half inch wire loom, that plastic stuff, to give it some extra protection if it would rub on anything or something would press up against metal. I don't want that shorting out because those are some pretty, pretty robust wires, pretty heavy gauge. So I don't want to fool around with that. They're pretty stout. And here's a nice shot of my ear. Shout out to the Sure. Bluetooth earbuds that I wear all the time. They're hearing protection and I can listen to my podcasts all day. And I'll just finish up that last piece of loom. This is the main supply connection that comes from a switch directly on the other side of this firewall. The main shutoff switch. And the ground connection is made to the frame. It comes up underneath there and attaches. And this skinny little wire also goes to the ground terminal. It comes from that electrical box where the receiver is for the remote and the relays whatever that's grounded there and that's the power supply which runs into the firewall to the switch and then out back to the battery where the power comes from snip that off and attach this front faceplate my open road brand winch and the little hook that came with it pretty awesome hook it on there to that recovery point love how that hangs on there I've got a 300 amp circuit breaker coming right off the battery and I'm able to shut it off here for the main point. It runs outside along one of the cooling lines actually down there towards the front towards the air conditioner and then it comes in the front of the firewall which I showed before there's a little grommet there to this disconnect switch which I can turn on and off and then that runs out to the winch so now the power is on. 
and I'm gonna try it out with this remote. Works pretty slick. I've never owned a vehicle with a winch before, but some of the reviews for this particular winch said that if you had the power connected at all times, it had a tendency to wind itself up and actually break the housing. So that's why I wanted to have the ability to make sure it was disconnected completely before I hang this on here and the thing pulls itself in over time and snaps one of the um, recovery points or the aluminum on the winch. So to me that was very important. I like how it hangs there. After the fact, I decided to add this aluminum piece here, like a plate cover, to protect that rope a little better from things on the road, dead grasshoppers flying in there, whatever you get from the road, moisture, just as a layer of protection for that rope. And now I think it's time to go try it out. So I'll hook it up to my work truck. It's on a bit of an angle, slight angle. I'm gonna put my emergency brake on the truck. The truck is in park. And I'm gonna get in the van and just put this into neutral. And using the remote control, see if I'll pull myself up. Works really nice. I was a little bit jerky on the controls here, it wasn't very smooth. But it pulled it up like nothing. Like it just beautiful works really well very happy with it now I'll just feed it back in carefully so it's nice and neat and very happy to have this when I'm traveling especially in the back roads stuff like that so if I ever get stuck like I did one time in Oregon I can hopefully get myself out a lot easier and faster with this especially now that I have some good clearance I'm ready to go get stuck ready for an adventure I think it's time for a road trip. Peace. Toyota, Toyota, Toyota. Slik starter denne låta. Ja låta, ja låta. Hei is kommer nå, kommer nå. Helt ny kassevogn på høyt nivå.